All right, everybody, turn your King James Bible to the book of Zechariah, Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. There's two books, Zephaniah and Zechariah. We're looking at Zechariah. A lot of people get those mixed up. We're going to do chapter 10. This is going to be very, very short. Verse 1. Oh, and this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord, reign in the time of the latter reign. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie. They have told false dreams. Ah, uh, boy, it sounds like the uh, television, tele television preachers uh, club, doesn't it? TBN? Yeah. And the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Verse 3. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds. Oh yeah. Why is the Lord's anger against the shepherds? Because they're hirelings. All they care about is passing that collection plate around and the tithe. That's the only thing they care about. If you hadn't eaten a week and you showed up at uh, Benny Hinn's or the, the G Billy Graham family or any of those people doorstep and asked them for a sandwich, they'd have probably have you arrested uh, their private security and have you carted off for trespassing. Think those people care about anything other than money? Well, you can you can believe that if you want, but uh, I'm none. I'm under no such illusion. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. You see, people, you got sheep. And you got goats. And just because a goat believes, it doesn't magically turn into a sheep. Uh, a sheep can act like a goat. And a goat can act like a sheep for a while, anyways. But eventually, the true nature will come out. Goats are goats, and sheep are sheep. And the sheep have no shepherd most of the time it seems mine anger was kindled against the shepherds and i punished the goats for the lord of hosts hath visited his flock the house of judah and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle out of him came forth the corner out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. Uh, Jesus was of Judah, and out of him came forth the corner. You know, isn't Christ called the cornerstone? Yeah. Out of him the nail. Uh, what did they use to put Jesus on the cross with? A nail, right? And out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle, and they shall fight. Because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. 
Well, guess what? In Jeremiah 3, 8, God said he divorced Israel. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, he said he would make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Boy, show that in a demon nominational church that uh, praises the uh, Antichrist. I have a feeling that you'd be told to leave and don't come back. Of course, that would be after they uh, try to explain those verses away. But if you insist upon pointing out that they're applicable, well, you're going to have to leave. You're divisive. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. I know that. I know their con game all too well. So, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord, I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. Well, guess what? God took Israel and part of Judah into the Assyrian captivity. And then, years later, along comes Babylon and takes Jerusalem and the what was left of Judah into their captivity for 70 years. So, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as though wine, yea, their children shall see it and be glad, and their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them. God's going to hiss at the enemy. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries. They shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up, and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. So the Assyrian Empire and the Egyptian Empire, they're, they're going to be finished. Verse 12. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. So that's the end of Zechariah chapter 10. We got one more thing, and then we're going to hit the New Testament. Dreams and visions. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, signing off.